Stand by. Satellite coming down in three, two, one. How's she going there, bud? Welcome to part one of the basic medical training for ACE Medical. This focuses on soldiers. If you want to know what settings we're using, because we are not using the default ACE Medical settings for this, we are using some custom settings that I use in my community that I think make ACE Medical more fun and more focused on having engaging gameplay for the medics, but not keeping people down too long and trying to get those people up once that engaging gameplay is done. Then you should go back and look at part zero where we discuss some of the settings for Ace Medical and specifically the settings that we use in my community as well as the settings that we're using for these tutorials. Without further ado, let's get into Ace Medical for Soldiers. All right, so let's talk about some basic, basic bandages and the quick version of which bandage to use for what scenario in Ace Medical base medical when you are a soldier quick rundown basic bandage again this is your basic bandage also known as a field dressing it's pretty good at everything it's not amazing average time to reopen elastic bandage great in a panic really fast to reopen but really fast to put on packing bandage quick clot both fairly effective really long reopening time so less likely to start re-bleeding so, what does this mean we don't, when we're a regular soldier looking at our equipment? Well, the most effective bandage is our elastic, so it's the best for a panic fix. Somebody's bleeding out in front of me, and I need to stabilize them. I'm going to use that elastic bandage. Best for average use when you're near a medic, or best kind of overall bandage is going to be either the field dressing or that packing dressing. It gives you some time and then a medic can come in and finish up the job with stitching. Best if you're going to be away from a medic, so say you're on a recon sniper team, something like that, either bring that quick clot or that packing or usually both. So those are going to be kind of your general idea. In general, you can probably get away with just bringing a bunch of basics and either some elastic or packing depending on your situation. Now let's look at drugs. So morphine auto injector is the only drug you need to carry as a basic rifleman. It's the only way in base ACE medical of removing pain. That comes with a caveat. It stays in the system and can cause you to overdose if you have too many morphines too quickly. So you need to check your triage card and see if you've had morphine within the last couple of minutes. Morphine overdoses are one of the fastest ways to screw up and end up unconscious, and there's no way in base ACE medical to reverse a morphine overdose. You just have to sit there until the morphine leaves the system and isn't as potent, so it's not causing an overdose status anymore. And that could take like around 10 minutes. And that's somebody just straight doing CPR to you for 10 minutes, and that totally kills the gameplay and leaves you sitting there for 10 minutes unconscious. So make sure you haven't received a morphine before you give yourself a morphine to try and knock out your pain. The next couple of items are obvious, definite needs. You want to have some splints on you so when you take that round to the leg, you're not stuck limping until a medic is kind enough to come splint you. Also, it's nice to carry your own equipment, so if you do need a medic, they can use some of it on you. Splints are great. They stop you from limping around the battlefield and put you back in the fight. Tourniquets are great both for yourself. If you take an explosion near you or your buddy gets blown up by a grenade and has got trauma everywhere, tourniquets buy you time. You pop those tourniquets on, they stop all bleeding on that limb, and then you can start bandaging while they're not bleeding anymore. Tourniquets are great time savers. And that's all you need. Basic rifleman medical, those are the things you need. So let's take a look at how to use them. So let's get into the how to actually do things. So this is your ACE medical menu. By default, accessed by hitting H. If you're looking at someone else, you will bring up their menu. menu. If you are not looking at anything or anyone else, you will bring up your menu. 
This is an easy mistake to make. Plenty of people have been caught before by trying to heal somebody else who's downed and looking at their own menu or vice versa. So you can always tell whose ace medical menu you are looking at by pulling up the, or looking at the top left. Couple of options across the side. View triage card will show you the, all the treatments that have currently happened to that patient and how long ago they happened. You can also take a look at the quick view or the activity log for treatments or assessments that have happened. The next section we have is the examine patient. This is dependent on what part of the body you're looking at. So right now we're looking at the head. That means I can check pulse and I can see here head has no injuries on this body part. If I check a pulse, it'll tell me heart rate normal. If you're not a medic, you can't know the exact numbers. You just get a sense. Torso, you can check a pulse. Any limb, you can check a pulse or also check blood pressure. And again, if you're not a medic, you're not going to get a number. You're just going to get a sense. Blood pressure is normal. Then we go over to bandage and fractures. This is where we do things. So any limb can apply a tourniquet. Any injury, you can apply a bandage because I'm fine. We don't see that. And then medication. Again, medications, morphine, any limb. If, it's not, if you can't do anything there, you won't have the option on the menu. Advanced treatments, we'll talk about in a moment. That's where you're going to find CPR. Drag carry, we'll talk about when we're looking at somebody else. So here we go. We've got ourselves a willing volunteer. Let's take a look at treatment. So we're going to look at the guy, and we're going to see, okay, he's in some bad shape. You can tell he's got injuries because he's got some trauma you can tell he's got a right leg fracture this is the icon for a fractured limb and then the fact that these are yellow or orange means he's bleeding and we can see on the right here if he's bleeding anywhere no matter which body part you have selected you will see bleeding then you can tell how much blood they've lost between lost some blood lost a lot of blood lost a large amount of blood or lost a fatal amount of blood so here he just ticked over to a large amount of blood. So before you start working super hard on resuscitating your friend, you want to make sure they're actually viable. The quick way to do that is if you can drag and carry a person, they are dead and down, but not dead and dead, which means they haven't been sent to a respawn screen. If you can't carry or drag the person, this menu isn't here. That means they're dead dead which is going to happen to this guy in a second because we've taken too much time treating him. So thank you for your support, guy. So you can see here, when we select body parts, we can see what injuries he has. So on this right leg, it's fractured. We can see that because it tells us, and he's got the fracture icon, and then he's got two, lar two large crushed tissues and a large avulsion. Or over on his leg, he's got two large avulsions, two minor avulsions, two minor bruises, and one small cut. So let's get ourselves another volunteer, because this guy, as you can see, no longer dragon carry. He's dead dead. If this is a player, he's going to the respawn screen. You can't get them back at this point. Let's get ourselves another willing volunteer, and we will look through what it's looking like to stabilize somebody. Alrighty, here we go. We got ourselves another willing volunteer. So let's learn how to stabilize somebody who's in bad shape. So we take a look at this guy and we can see that he is in rough shape. Anything that's orange or red means that this guy has bleeding there. You can also tell that there's bleeding anywhere on the body because you will see bleeding. And then you will see an amount of blood that has been lost between lost some blood, lost a lot of blood, lost a large amount of blood, or lost a fatal amount of blood. We can tell we're not looking at ourselves. And we can tell that we can drag carry so he can be worked on and saved. So step number one, we need to stop bleeding. So we're going to put tourniquets on every limb. And that'll stop the bleeds in that limb faster than bandaging them. All right, so we've got the tourniquets on. He's no longer bleeding in those limbs. Now we're going to start bandaging places we can't tourniquet, so the torso and the head, and we're going to use the elastic bandages in this case because we know that they're the fastest, most effective, and we're going to hope we have a medic nearby. You can see there that his torso turned red, and when we come back, his head will be blue, rather, and that means he's no longer bleeding from these locations. 
If we look over on the right, we can see he is not bleeding anymore. He still has these open wounds on all of his limbs, but the tourniquets have stopped that from being a problem. So now we can move on to the next part of our, our stabilization for this guy. Well, we know he's not currently bleeding. We're still going to have to fix that later, but we can move on. So we need to now check, does this guy have a pulse? And we can see heart rate none. So we know he doesn't have a pulse. That'll kill him in whatever the cardiac arrest timer is. So in this server, it's five minutes. So we need to select his chest or his torso, go to advanced treatments, and start CPR. So we've done a round of CPR. Now we're going to go back and we're going to check a pulse. So we find no CPR or no pulse. We're going to go back and do CPR again. We're going to keep doing CPR and then pulse checks until we see that this guy has a pulse or until a medic shows up and tells us to do something different. Never check the pulse while CPR is in progress with by say one of your battle buddies because you will always find a pulse well CPR is in progress. So here we go, heart rate normal. I've done my CPR, I've got his heart rate back. He's no longer in cardiac arrest. However, you can see again, he's bleeding. That's because that head bandage opened up because the medic hasn't been here to stitch it. So now, in this case, if I think the medic's gonna be a while, I can now take that time to put in that packing bandage and that's gonna last a whole lot longer, but it's not as effective. It only partially fixed that. So I'm going to need a second pack and bandage to close that large crust tissue that he had on the head. Whereas before, I only needed the one elastic. So it's not as effective. It's not going to be as fast. But it's going to buy me more time till, until a medic gets here. So now I can go through. He's not bleeding in the head and torso anymore. We've stopped that bleeding because he's got the tourniquets on. We know he has a pulse. We'll double check that that blood loss while well, he was reopened didn't drop that pulse. He still has a pulse. My next step is I need to bandage all of these limbs because these tourniquets will eventually kill him. And there we go. As you can see, he's all blue. We can now remove these tourniquets so the pain from the tourniquets doesn't actually kill them. So, we've finished him. He's all bandaged. He isn't bleeding anymore. And if we go through and just confirm that he still has a pulse, he does have a pulse. That's it. That's all we can do. This guy's going to need a, med a medic to come by and stitch those wounds and give him some blood before he's going to wake up. So there's nothing left for us to here to do. We've stabilized him. We hope there's a medic nearby. If not, then we'll periodically check on him or we'll bring him over to the medic. But that is basic stabilization of a pretty extreme case of trauma. Next, we're going to look at a couple of more common injuries and how to deal with those. So one pretty common way for people to go down quick is a shot to the head. They get one tapped in the head and that'll put just about everybody unconscious. So we're gonna quickly bandage that wound to the head. And we can check a pulse, but in general, anybody who's received a shot to the head and gets down here never has a pulse. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna do our CPR and our check pulse. He's got a strong heart rate. He's no longer bleeding. We've we're here pretty fast, so he's only lost some blood. So this is a guy who's probably going to wake up pretty quickly here because he's now vitally stable enough that without, even without a medic coming by, he's going to be running those am I going to wake up ticks. So we should see him come back to the fight pretty fast. So for our next injury type, we're going to look at it's going to be the fracture. So if we look at ourselves here, we can see that we have this red icon and it says our arm is fractured. So, first things first, we're going to heal ourselves. This is just like healing somebody else, but using our own medical menu. And we're going to stop our bleeding. So, you can see our arm is blue. We're no longer bleeding, but we still have this fracture. In the case of an arm fracture, what that's going to do is it's going to give us some pretty aggressive weapon sway. No matter, this is with 
no stamina de degradation whatsoever, and we've got this crazy weapon sway. In the case of a leg fracture, it's going to slow us to a walk. So we need to fix that. So all we need to do is click on the fractured limb and apply a splint. Again, this works the same if you're treating somebody else. But there we go. We have it set so that splints will fully heal a fracture. So now my weapon sway is way back under control and I can stabilize this gun. And there you have it. That's a quick look at how to be effective in Ace Medical as a soldier. You're not going to get people back up necessarily, but you're going to be able to stabilize them and keep them alive until your medic arrives. In the next episode, we're going to look at just that, how to be an effective medic in Ace Medical. We'll see you then.